It's been all about the pitching on the corner of third and King. On Friday, Madison Bumgarner dominated the Padres with 10 strikeouts. And last night, Tim Lincecum looked like he was back to his old ways. Now it's up to Barry Zito to continue the trend and bring home a sweep. It's the Giants and Padres, and it's next. It's Hyundai Sunday on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area as Giants baseball is brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. Today it's the Giants and Padres final game of the series from AT&T Park here in San Francisco. Hi again everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Giants go for the sweep today and uh, Barry Zito. Well he had a rough outing in Milwaukee but he's at home. And, uh, and I expect Barry Zito to throw very well today. Well, the important thing is so does Barry Zito. I mean, he hasn't given up a run here at AT&T this year. He's very confident on the hill. Why shouldn't you? It's a great place to pitch. The Giants in his first two games of the series, they've been winning with defense and pitching, and they really need to get the offense cranked up. They're all waiting for it to happen. So far, it has, has not. Not to their liking. Perhaps today's the day. Yeah, Buster Posey has good numbers against Eric Stull, and so does Pablo Sandoval. All right, stay tuned. When we come back, we will have the very important lineups and the very important first pitch right after this. Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. The Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. And by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. Back inside AT&T Park. Beautiful day for baseball. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is opened right now this weekend. 69 degrees here at the yard. We have light winds, humidity at 55%. It is warm. It is pleasant. It is perfect. It is perfect. All right, the lineup that Zeta will be facing it'll be Denarfia and then the switch hitter Cabrera, followed by Headley, another switch hitter, 
and pretty good numbers against Zito. Guzman, Jerko, followed by Blanks, Hundley, Max and Molly's kid will hit eighth, and Eric Stoltz will pitch in bat ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be Barry Zito making start number four. He has been unscored upon in his two starts here at AT&T. 13 strikeouts against six walks and 16 and two thirds. And he's right. You're going to see lots and lots of movement. A curveball, a slider, a fastball that goes 83, 87. He'll sink. He'll cut anything at any time. And in this ballpark, he has been fantastic since the start of this year. So here's Denorfia. And the first pitch of the ball game is on its way. And it is taken high. So we get started at 105. Denorfia hitting 375. He's always been a pain against the Giants. And Zito's next pitch is high as well. It's 2 0. I can see a lot of high strikes today with Bob Davidson, the plate umpire. He's a low ball umpire. You will get some width on both sides of the plate. But you have to establish down early. Put it in mind that in his mind that you throw strikes and then that zone will grow. And uh, there Zito drops it in for a strike. See the rest of the umpires Reynolds Hoy and Hirschbeck. That'll go. From first to third. And then takes another strike that's two and two. I'm not sure he. Agreed with that. Two balls, two strikes. Benarfia started on Friday against Madison Bumgarner, and he went two for four in that game. He had two of the Padre five hits. Two two pitch. And it's rolled foul on the breaking ball. Benarfia really had a couple of nice opposite field base hits. Giants won on Friday, three to two. And behind Tim Lincecum last night, they shut out the Padres 2 0. The Norfia takes low, and it's a full count. Lincecum had a little help, Biharis, Casilla, Romo. But to overall, it was a really nice ball game for Tim Lincecum. 3 and 2 to Denarfia. Popped. Foul down the right field line and out of play. Take a look at Barry Zito, our XMO brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Look at the elbow above the shoulder in perfect position there. And that's a curveball. And he has got one of the biggest curveballs in all of baseball. And uh, you saw the technique, the hand action, just like you're hammering a nail with a hammer. Denorfier hits one out to left. Ball's going to carry today. Torres and Pagan, and it's going to be Pagan in left center field who puts it away. That gives you an idea. Today's a good day to hit. It's a hot yard right now. Let's take a look at that defense playing behind Zito today for the Giants starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Torres, Pagan, and Pence. Crawford and Sandoval will anchor down the left side of the infield. Scudero and Arias will be on the right side with Belk getting a day off, and Buster Posey will be in the squad putting down the signs. So here's Everett Cabrera. Hitting at 302. He's off to a good start. Taps this one back to Zito. Zito to Arias, two outs. So you have a long at bat with Denorfia, and then you have a one pitch at bat, and things even out to nine pitches. I never understood why a guy the first time through the lineup hitting off a guy for the first time with nobody on base is going to hack at the first pitch. Hitters. Here's Headley. Headley takes a strike. Headley clearly taking your advice. No balls in one strike. Well, I mean, with all the emphasis that's put on pitch count. Your goal should be to try and get pitches out of your pitchers. It's okay if Headley swings now. All right, fine. He can swing now. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. And Headley on an 0 2 pitch drives it into left field for a base hit. And I think he was sitting on that curveball to hold it back. I think you're right.
So here's Jesus Guzman. Pretty good numbers lifetime against Zito. He's got a double, a home run. He's four for seven. Arias will hold Headley. And a call strike. The absence of Carlos Quentin is, is uh, very obvious when they're facing a left hander like Zito. I mean, Carlos Quentin can hit righties and lefties, but he is really missed on days like today. Edley you know, flinch a little bit, but he gets back. Quentin, I think, comes back active on Tuesday. Is that correct? I believe it is. Eight days of suspension for a fight with Zach Greinke, Padre Dodger series. And you're right, he is missed, especially on a day when Padres are facing lefties. And on a day where the ball seems to be carrying here. On a warm Sunday sunny afternoon. It's 0 and 1 to Guzman. Headley goes. Pitches high. Posey's throwing the dirt. Scooter out. Not in time. Now that would have been a heck of a play. Scooter made it close. And if you're a catcher, if you're going to miss in your accuracy, miss low. And that's exactly what Posey did. A one hopper. And I think they got him. Does he hit the foot? Oh, he just brushed that foot. He was out. Could have, could have called him out. One ball and one strike. A little flare down the right field line. That'll be fine. Time now for our Geico quote comes from Barry Zito on the win streak that ended in his last outing in Milwaukee. He says, I have to tip my cap to them for hitting my pitches. It was a great streak that mattered most in the playoffs, so it's something I'll always take great pride in. So you start a new streak. One and two. Hit the left field. Torres back. Torres in front of the wall. Inning over. All right. Should be a good one. She's lineup. A couple of changes. It'll be Pagan, Scooter, oh, and then the Panda hit a big home run last night. The only two runs in the game. Buster Posey will hit fourth, followed by Pence. And then Joaquin Arias, he gets a start instead of Bell. Torres with the left hander out on the mound. Stultz, he starts at left. That is Crawford and Zito. 
Eric Stoltz on the hill today for the Padres, six foot tall, 230 pounder. His third year at the big league level, and he is 33 years old. He spent a lot of times getting to the big leagues. And when you hit off of Stoltz, you're going to see a fastball that's going to go uh, high, mid 80s. He's got a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. He'll throw anything at any time. He's a guy that pitches the contact, however, right now he's got it going with the strikeout. You saw the stats. In 16 innings pitch, he has struck out 15. So here's Pagan, two for eight in the series, hitting over 300. He's one for eight lifetime against Stoltz, and he takes a strike. And Stoltz four and two lifetime against the Giants. ERA in the fives, though, so they do get their hits off him. Pagan out in front, down the line, a long run for Blanks, and it's going to be out of play. Let's take a look at that Padres defense, starting in their outfield from left to right. We just saw Blanks. He's joined by Venable and Denorfia. Uh, good arms in right and in center. Cabrera and Headley on the left side of the infield. Jerko and Guzman on the right side. And Nick Hundley will be in the squad putting down the signs. And that hits Pagan on the foot. I don't know, two pitch. Wait, not so fast. Here comes Bruce Pochi. Davidson's not going to budge on this one. Got him around the toe. Got him on a toe in the back foot. Watch the back foot right on the toe. Just skims. That's something you definitely can feel. The Norfia, Cabrera, Guzman, Davidson, 0 for 1 today. <laughs> That's right. And Bach and Bob is getting an earful from somebody, so he just has taken on the Giants bench. First inning. Ron Wotus. Just casually letting Bach and Bob know that he missed a call. Well, if Pagan keeps pointing at him, he's going to get thrown out of the game. Now you can see why Pagan is upset. One more look. Watch the right toe, the back foot. And it clearly it changes direction. It got him right on the toe. Rolled foul. If you're Pagan and you make an out, that's when you have to have some self discipline. Well, you will say something if you say you're throwing out on a ground ball to the right side of the infield. Now you hit home first base. Now you're coming across the field. You will say something to an umpire. Or if you strike out. If he gets called out, on a questionable call. I don't care if he gets called out on a ball right down the middle of the plate. He's going to get thrown out. Well, there are certain things that are just hard to shake between your ears, and I think getting hit by a pitch is one of them. You can't shake it off. At the very least, it clouds your concentration on the bat. Slowly on the ground to short. And Cabrera will throw him out. And right here is where you get a bite your lip. And if you're Bob Davidson, do you look for it or do you avoid it? It's good discipline right there. Yes, it is. I guarantee Davidson's still listening to something coming out of that Giants dugout. 
So here's Scudero. Good discipline. Scudero takes wide. One ball and no strikes. Hitting 242. Pablo Sandoval on deck. It's an example of the low strike zone from Davidson. One and two. Scudero two for five lifetime against Stoltz. Oh for three last night in the Giants win. Scudero took an 0 for three on Friday night. So he's looking for his first hit in this series. Hit out to left. Coming in is Blanks. Now moving back. Two outs. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. Well, Dwayne, a sigh of relief for fans today seeing Pablo back in the lineup after fouling a ball off his right foot in last night's game in the seventh inning. He told me after the game it hurt very bad. He actually, the ball hit in between his heel and his ankle bone right where the protective gear is not. Bruce Bochy kind of joking today saying with all the armor the guys wear, it's amazing that they still hit skin, but they do. Good to see him up there, Dwayne. Indeed. Didn't look good last night. So here's Sandoval. Sandoval's got a double and a triple against Stoltz in his career. He's six for ten. Pops this one up. It'll be Headley. And that'll end the inning. So one, two, three inning for Stoltz. Inning number two coming up. Out to center field to wait for Angel Pagan. And then very politely said, May I please have your autograph? She's wait to see her run. So she gets the autograph. May I please have your autograph? It's a hug. And here we go. And this young lady. I mean, she can fly. She's the fourth fastest person on the field. And she got. Around shortstop, and they pointed her towards third. And she got to third, and she came in front of the dugout. And by that time, all the players were applauding, standing. The fans gave her a standing ovation. And she was a major hit. Stole the show. That will not be the last time she does that in her life. There's a call strike to Jed Jerko. Jerko hitting 224 with six RBIs. 
0 and 2. Nice change up. Just a good two pitch sequence. Set a speed, first pitch, put it in their mind, come back, same arm action, take about eight feet off. Get it way out front off his back foot. One and two. Jerko started against Bumgarner. That's the game where he went 0 for 3. Out of play, forcing Jerko to reach out over the plate. I think she had a little spurt towards the end. You can see the players on the front of the dugout all applauding as she came by. Stuck with breathing hard. No. Got him. <laughs> Strikeout number one for Zito, and he does it on a big curveball. So here's Kyle Blanks. Does not have a hit in the series. He's got. Lots and lots of power. On a day like today, he'll try to get good wood on one and get it in the air as he drives this one into right center field. And it's Pagan. Two outs. I just don't know how a guy can just swing at that first pitch. Unbelievable. All right, check out the dynamic deals for the three D back games, which will start. On Monday, Monday tickets start as low as $12, and there are $8 tickets still available for Wednesday. So visit sfgiants.com slash dynamic deal. The forecast for that day game on Wednesday is swing and a miss by Hungley. It's 80 and sunny. I don't know. I made that up, but... It, could be. Well, it feels like 80 today. First pitch 69 degrees, but it seems warmer. Out of play, another in two. Nice play. Brought his glove. Gamer. Nice applause. Oh, two pitch. Rolled foul. All right, let's take a look at the catch. That's a good play. Could not have played him any better on Little League Day. This little leaguer. He's got his uni on. Makes a great play. If you don't bring your glove, you don't make that play. No chance. Diving for the underneath the seat. Foul just to our right. And it's Dr. Richard Cohen, a personal hero of mine. He's one of our ball dudes on third base, and Tony Graham on the first base side today. Sandoval will feel this one in foul territory. Hundley will come back. Here's Dr. Cohen, oncologist, retired now. Total gamer. He's ready. That is the go position right there. He is waiting for a ground ball. And when he gets Zito pitching on the mound, right handers, good chance that Dr. Cohen's going to get a few plays today. Oh and two and now Hundley asked for time. In the center field, the base hit. Plus, if you just need to know the time. Well, that's kind of a rules violation, but there are certain things that sort of tell everybody that you are a ball dude, not a player. And wearing your watch. That's a rules violation. 
Doc. Seriously. <laughs> All right, does he make a friend here? Oh, he's got one soloed out. Here's Will Venable who takes the pitch inside, one and oh. And tight again. Now, Will Venable, lefty against lefties, hit Zito pretty well. He's four for ten. Pretty much straight up. Watch the gap in right center. They give him the line on that right side. Foul. That's Dave Roberts. That's their ball, dude. Tony Graham. <laughs> Seriously. Semi retired lawyer. Throw your glove at it, Tony. And he too has his watch on. See so this right here? Tony caught as many as Ahmed <laughs> Fareed did last night. An old soccer player. Yeah, Ahmed Fareed still waiting for that play. Three and one. All right, I got this one. Yeah. 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 He's looking for the high hop. He's a high hop guy, I can tell. Pull the ball's down around his feet. He's got none chance. Uh, three and one to Venable. And the walk. So here's Stoltz. Stoltz has got a home run this year. He can hit a little bit. I mean, 232 average and 82 at bats. That's a pretty good endorsement to being able to hit. Hit out to Pence. Pence moves back, side retired. Closey, Pence, Arias coming up. Nothing, nothing. Bay Area is brought to you by the Solar Company. Not just any solar company, the Solar Company. Well, the 2013 All Star Teacher Contest is here. It's brought to you by Provident Credit Union. You can vote at csnbayarea.com. It's in its seventh season, and Comcast Sports and All Star Teacher Program recognizes Bay Area teachers that make a difference. And you can visit csnbayarea.com and vote for the 2013 All Star Teacher. Check out finalist bios and video features. 
hey, you might find out there's some heroes that live pretty close to you. The winning teacher will receive $20,000 for his or her school. So check it out. Here's Buster Posey. One for three yesterday. One for two on Friday night. And he rolls this one foul and it's no balls and one strike. Four for six against Stultz in his career with a double. Outside corner, it's now nothing and two. Pulls it foul behind Tim Flannery and Doc. Doc! Shot right by Doc. He was close. Where he had a chance to. Uh, if he doesn't have that watch on, he makes the play. He might have thrown out the glove. You're right. Outside, one and two. Dude, now watch Doc get a good jump on this. Now! It's not easy being a ball dude. Two and two. Timing's just a little off. Full count, 0 2 to 3 2 with Hunter Pence on deck. It's a good seller today. I'm thinking that that's lemonade. Yeah, this guy's got to be in shape working up there. Posey hits it high and deep and foul. Uh, I, I know it's a foul ball, but that felt pretty good. Yeah, look at this. Never thought that they'd get a ball today. And how about that? Well, she paid a price for it. And Who's for a ball? You know, for the leg. On the ground, foul. <laughs> Might be a long day for Doc. Zito and Stoltz. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about it now. I think he needs a longer glove. And another payoff pitch. Look out. Brandon Bell's having an off day and he almost got smoked on the ugly finder. It is an ugly finder. It's just a trainer, Anthony Riss. Next game. All right, let's take a look. Hey, got somebody. Posey goes the other way. And yeah, this one will be close to being off the bricks. Six foul balls, ten pitches. They're coming inside. And Buster Posey digs it out. It was at 88, so he added a little extra. I'll tell you what, he could not put it in a better place. Was it a strike? I don't think so. Not with a low ball zone that Davidson has, but two strike counts, you have to expand a little bit, which is what Buster did. And Stoltz, like, he got that ball in there nicely. Drives one to left. It'll be Blanks who drifts back and he puts it away. So a long at bat. Lots of little leaguers today. And of course, if there's a camera around, they're going to spot it. Yeah. Yep. Here's Pence. I love Little League Day. Automatic. Over the fence, Pence. Been sitting 268. Four home runs, 11 RBIs. It's 
It's amazing how similar these two pitchers today are Zito and Stoltz. Both guys throw below the normal hit speed. Average fastball is right around 90 at the big league level. It's come down a little bit in the last few years, but still, these guys are well below it. Stoltz averages around 86, Zito around 84 with the fastball. Two and two. Both with good curveballs, change ups, cutters. I mean, pretty much the same type of stuff, and they don't give in to any count. They're not going to give you a predictable fastball. Pence fouls it back. On deck, Joaquin Arias. Here's the 2 2 to Pence. The back foot breaking ball. Pence out in front as he pops this one up. Cabrera out and he puts it away. Two outs. And here's Arias. Giants won a ball game yesterday and they only had three hits. No hits so far early in this one. Arias hitting 250. He's got a couple of RBIs. Fouls it out of play. Well, both teams must figure that these pitchers are going to be around the plate because, for the most part, they're all hacking on the first pitch. It's been a while since Arias has had a start. Now, you go a long time without a start. Would you rather see a flamethrower or would you rather see a guy who's a finesse pitcher like Stoltz? <laughs> How about a flamethrower with control? Okay. Tap foul, one and two. How you doing? Got his hat on, form fit. Just like Buster Posey. Chasing a high fastball. It's now one and two. I don't know how he hit that, but he fouled it off. You'll see another pitch. They set up in the inside corner. Or break a ball. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can hit that behind his back leg. That's not easy to do either. Popped up to the right side. And that'll end the inning. Six up, six down for Stoltz. Denarfia will lead things off.
brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. The 2012 San Francisco Giants Championship Collection. Well, it's for the fans. Whether it's Arians Cufflinks, your own championship ring, check it out. Exclusively sold at all Bay Area dugout stores and through sfgiants.com slash fan ring. A lot of good stuff. Here's Denarfia who hit a fly ball to center field to open up the ball game. The Padres have had three base runners. The Giants haven't had any. Strike to Denarfia. Zeta comes in tight. It's one ball and one strike. That's a great place to be today. Yeah. All the way from Incline Village. One and two. See, uh, that's a great name for a boat. Joyride. Yep. Uh, I'm in. That's a good name. Get out to Pence. Pence moves back. So used to walking out fielders come in. All right. We just love when she's here. Here's Amy G. All right, Dwayne. I love when you're here too. And you see, as you mentioned, it's Little League Day here at AT&T Park. About 6,000 kids and their parents got to come to the park early. Our very own Mike Kruko was the host, and some of the guests included Brandon Belt, Nick Noonan, and bench coach Ron Wotus. Mike, my favorite part is watching you have so much fun do this, and there's always great questions asked. What was your favorite today? What was the one the guy said? Uh, my dad's a Dodger fan. And so my dad, my dad's a Dodger fan, and, and what can I do about it, or something like that? It was just it tore the place apart, and he was serious. Was the dad there? Oh yeah. Oh, beautiful. Did you make him go stand in the corner? I told the son, I said, you know what, you got to, you got to, you got to dump your dad. You got to find a new one. <laughs> just go to eBay. Yeah, you can find a, a dad on eBay, but you have to make sure you say, make sure he's not a Dodger fan. It was a great group, and uh, we had uh, Nick Noonan and Brandon Belt, Ron Wotus. They were our speakers today. But One and two. The, the kids never disappoint. This, the questions that they ask are just all fantastic. One ball and two strikes to Everett Cabrera. Arias, fair ball, steps off the bag, two outs. Here is Mike's favorite question from this morning. My dad's a Dodger fan. Can you give me advice to change that? That was the one. I don't know. Hey, beat LA, right? <laughs> two outs. That's the greatest question I have ever heard. Here's Edley who singled in the first. Give me advice. Oh man. Edley dribbles it to the backstop. How about the play Arius got? He had a great reaction. Here's the 0-1 to Headley. His reaction is from a couple of old ball players is, are you kidding me? That's my first ground ball at first today. Yeah, he almost hits Cabrera in the head as he ran by. Good pitch. That's one that Zito wants. Well, I mean, if you're a utility guy, a utility guy means you need to play all four positions, but you expect to get an easier ground ball, right? Yeah. First one. And we ought to play two and two.
2 2 pitch. And Headley pulls this one right over past the Giants on deck circle. Oh, he's got Larry Nibby. Two balls, two strikes. Work for Crawford. And Crawford to Arias, side retired. One, two, three inning for Zito. For the Giants, Torres Crawford, Zito coming up. Donald's true stories. It's a Giants walk-off hit against the Padres last season. It happened at the end of July in 2012. And it was Brandon Crawford, RBI single in the ninth, beat the Padres 3-2. It would be the Giants' ninth victory in 11 games since the All-Star break. Here's Andres Torres, followed by Crawford. And then Zito, first pitch is in the dirt. Torres hadn't had much of a chance to play lately. All right handers for a while at least. For starting pitching. Nice little three day stretch here though. He's going to see some lefties. Four in Chicago. Three in Milwaukee. Two in this series although yesterday it was supposed to be. As Torres goes the other way. That's going to be a base hit. Will he challenge Denorfia? You bet he will. It's going to be close. Torres in there with a headlong fly. He just had two bases on his mind the minute he left that box. Now Denorfia has a good arm. If you challenge him, you are definitely rolling the dice. But a great opposite field swing of the bat on that big backdoor breaking ball. And watch how Denorfia sets up. I mean, that's very quick and just an errant throw. I mean, he definitely put the pressure on the defense and they could not respond. Nice play. And he gets it going, he can motor. So here's Crawford. Crawford 0 for 1 lifetime against Stoltz. Swinging a tapper foul. It's no balls in one strike. Crawford is 0 for 6 in the series. And the Giants pick up their first hit of this game, and it's a double by Andres Torres. <laughs> 0 and 2. I 
I think a lot of guys this first time through the Giants lineup have been sitting on that curveball or change up just sitting a speed a, a slower speed than fastball because they've taken some pretty healthy fastballs fastballs you wouldn't think they would take it Crawford goes the other way and that's a base hit I don't think Crawford got any cheeks into that swing but he hit it in a perfect spot now the, the most dramatically improved hitter in two strike counts this year for the Giants has been Brandon Crawford and this is his all hands give yourself a position be able to cover the outside that's not a bad pitch in a two strike count and he does the right thing he goes the opposite way so two excellent two strike at bats in this inning against Stoltz both going the opposite way and the Giants have it set up. So Zito who comes into the game three for four. He's hitting. 750. Willie Bunt. Leaves not a good one. And the out is made in Crawford down to second. Let's watch the technique of Barry Zeal bunting. We're going to make it our forward right choice. You get the bat at the top of the, of the strike zone. He does pop it up, but doesn't get a lot on it because he hits it off the end of the bat. And the bottom line is the results are perfect. The Giants do a pretty good job with their staff, but he might be the best. Gets it done. And he usually does it in the first pitch. So here's Pagan who bounced out to short. And he takes one low and in one ball and no strikes. Block by Hundley. It's two and oh. They could very well just be pitching around Pagan to set up a. A chance to get a double play with Scooter Oak coming up. Uh, I think you're right. I mean, that's how he's going after him. He's teasing him with big breaking balls, but he's not leaving anything hanging out in the strike zone. Three and oh. Stop the gun, look right at, po at uh, Bruce Bochy as if to say, I got a 3 0 can here. Can I have the green light? Doesn't hurt to ask. Line drive, base hit, right center field. Torres scores. Crawford scores. Pagan in the second with a double, and it's 2 0 Giants. There's your green light. Well, I like the fact that he went the opposite gap. He didn't get greedy on it. Had it in his mind. And then maybe he did get that confirmation from Bochi with the look that he gave him. But a lot of guys in a 3-0 that try to go for the downs. And here he just takes that little cut fastball, goes right back with the same angle it came in with. Goes it right out there to right center. And the reward is a two RBI double. The Giants put take the lead. Nice at that. So here's Scudero. Scudero hit a fly ball to the left in the first inning. And he takes low. One ball and no strikes. Chance 8 and 1 when they score first. Scudero held up and he takes a strike. One ball and one strike. Sandoval is on deck. So the bottom of the order sets it up for the top of the order.
Off the end of the bat, it's one and two. Pagan at second base, two nothing Giants. And now Stoltz will chase Pagan back. Oh, yeah. 50. That's a milestone. Scudero pops it up over by the Padres dugout. Uh, it's in the first row and then lost. And then he saves the day. Yeah. Well, you sit that seat down there as a kid. You don't know, walk away just ball game with a ball in your hand. You've had a bad day. Yeah. You need to work on your charm. Dave Benzer just took care of it. Nice going, Benny. And a pickoff play put on, and Stultz chooses not to throw. Now let's watch the slide and the play. Dave Benzer right there to make things right. Find a kid, give him a ball, you've done a good thing. Or give her a ball, you've done a good thing. Scudero lifts one high and foul down the left field line. Giants hitters are trying to get everybody a foul ball today in this part. Well, it's definitely running up the pitch count on Stoltz. Out to right field, Denorfia will put it away. Pagan will tag and he'll move to third. All right, time now for our AT&T U-verse rewind. Last night, Pablo Sandoval was the difference in the game offensively. An incredible like, just war against Andrew Castro, the pitcher. And in a two-strike count, he takes a 95-mile-an-hour fastball off the belt inside corner, a location that after the game, Castro said that was exactly where I wanted to throw it. Nobody could believe that he did it, but the Panda was just being the Panda. He did a two-run homer, his third of the year, and that was the difference of the game, and that was our AT&T U-verse rewind. He can do things other guys can't, and that's an example of it. Look out. I saw some blows go up and right. self defense. It's called fan inventory right now. Looks like everybody survived that one. That was Whistler. And that's a bit foul to Headley, and then it's 0 2. Well, Stoltz has definitely got him off balance. Oh, yeah. You need a fan today, huh? What do you always say about putting the camera too long on kids? What's your name? What about Grandma? I think she qualifies. 0-2 to Sandoval. Sandoval is refusing to let Hundley catch anything Stoltz throws. Cabrera is going out and say, throw it in the dirt. Well, he can hit that, though. That's a cue.
He is not going to let Hudley catch a pitch. Nope. Four foul balls. Souvenirs all around. Up the middle and the base hit. Pagan's going to score and Sandoval hit that one before it bounced. And Stokes cannot believe it. And look how low outside corner below the knees. It had to be a foot high. And he goes right out and gets it. It's it right back up the middle. And that's a big league RBI. And that is a backbreaker for Eric Stoltz. A two out RBI and a pitch like that. Wow. Here's Buster Posey. Posey rolls it foul. I suppose he had a fly ball to the left in the second inning had a long at bat. The uh, the at bat for I suppose is 12 pitches. High down the right field line. The North is playing so far off the line. He has none chance. <laughs> he took like two steps and said, Who am I kidding? And this is far over in left center field as we have seen a right fielder set up. And that's a long way to here. That's just giving him the line in a, in a strong way. Got him, and that'll end the inning. I suppose he has a word with Bob Davidson. Giants pick up three here in the third inning on four hits. As we head to the fourth, it's three nothing San Francisco. You can tweet your answer to or at CSN Giants. The question, who was the last Giants pitcher before Barry Zito to record an RBI in the World Series? 
Again, if you think you know the answer, tweet us at CSN Giants. Let's think about that a little bit. Here's Guzman to lead things off for the fourth inning. Guzman hit a fly ball to deep left field to end the first. A little more wind in the ballpark now than there was at the start of this ball game. You don't have quite the carry to right field like you had early in the game. Good pitch, one ball and one strike. Cito never ever backed into a, a predictable pitch. And because he has so many different types of pitch and different types of movement, and he can take and add speed on all of them, and he's not afraid to throw in any of them in any count. Whew. He's not getting that backdoor slider. That's about the third time he's gone out there. And to Davidson's credit, I mean, he's been consistent with it, he hasn't given it. Hit to left again. And Torres will put it away. Uh oh. Jeez. Well, look, it doesn't affect me as much as it does my partner. But I, I, I do have a drill bead from my mouth to my shoe top right now. I got to be honest with you. Here, Deli, they're so good. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. I know you do. Kirko with a big swing and a foul at the plate. Jesus Guzman has two fly balls in left field, and both times he's gone back to the Padre dugout saying, I just missed that thing. And that's what Zito will do to you. He'll give you a nice, comfortable 0 for 4. Well, you, I mean, you can say the same thing about Stoltz. Identical styles. Oh, and one to Jed Jerko. One ball and one strike. Kyle Blanks is on deck. Not close, two and one. Three and one. This is where you buy off more strikes. I don't take advantage of that three nothing lead. Doc. Oh, get it with a stop rolling. Talking about fastball velocity and the lowest average. And Zito averages 83.3. All throwers that are below the average speed. Line drive. Scudero's got it. That's a pretty good bat right there by Jerko, and he gets nothing for it. And the way this play was set up is look at where he's playing about three steps over towards the bag. So Ron Wotus gets an assist on this one, moving Scudero over just in time to do this. Two outs here's blanks. Hit the left field. Torres. Side retired. Hunter Pence is going to lead things off. It's coming to the booth. I know it is. I have no chance if my partner gets his hands on this. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that.
question. The question today is a good one. Who was the last Giants pitcher before Barry Zito to record an RBI in the World Series? Our survey said, well, Johnny Antonelli did it in 1954. And prior to 2010, that was the last year the Giants had won the World Series, the New York Giants. So you want to go back in time? Game one, World Series. And Zito does this. Gets an RBI. One of those magic at bats that he could come up with. And everybody in that ballpark took that at bat as a sign. A, a big sign, yeah. danger sign. Sign and a half. Pence with a high chopper. Cabrera charging. Pence can run. And he beats it out. He will surprise you with his speed. When you see a guy his size that fast, and it's impressive. But Cabrera's got more than enough arm to throw a guy out, but he just could not seem to get it out of his glove. That's four flat from the right side, and that's a guy 6'4", 220. He got out of the box extremely well. Four flat, and that's one of the fastest times you'll see all year long from a guy from the right side. Not even close. So here's Arias. Arias fouls it back. A good rip. It's 0-1. He popped out to end the second. That's the type of thing that will get every scout in the scout section talking. When you see a guy that big going down the line from the right side of the batter's box. Four flat. That's exceptional speed. Score well at the NFL combine. <laughs> I'll tell you. Arias pops it up again. This is to Denorfia in right field. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, Dwayne, as you know, we always like to mention former Giants that are here at the park, especially when they were good Giants, and the Padres are full of them. Manager Bud Black was a starting pitcher with the orange and black from 91 to 94. First base coach Dave Roberts was a Giant in 2007 and 2008, and Mark the Mudcat Grant. He's Come an on, announcer for the San Diego Padres. He was actually a first round draft pick in 1981 of the Giants. He was a reliever, guys. He said his favorite part about being a Giant was sitting on the bench between you two. I'm guessing you remember that. I'm guessing we do. Yeah, he was a great rookie. You go back and look at Mark Grant's A ball statistics, and they were unbelievable. He was the phenom. He was the number one pick. Too hard, big curveball changeup. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Plus, when he got to the big leagues, whatever he asked him to do, he would do it. And that could be dangerous. <laughs> and he just thought that that was what he was supposed to do. When you had the tea party at the end of the year and you had all the rookies sing. Shot up the middle, base hit. Two hit day for Torres. Now, who is it that didn't want to sing? Scott Garrell. Scott Garrell did not want to sing, and Mark Grant said, I'll sing for him. Yeah. We couldn't get Grant off the stage. So here's Crawford. Crawford singled in the third inning. And Hunley, Hunley knocked that down. In the, it was not in the dirt. He just knocked it down. All right, I've got Mark Grant's statistics here, courtesy of our guys in the truck. Mark Grant. As when he was an A ball with the Giants, he was 16 and 5 with a 2.36 ERA. But get this, 190 innings in A ball, he struck out 243. Clinton Giants. Uh, do you think he was on the fast track? Well, he was managed that year by you remember Wendell Kim. One and zero to Crawford. 
One and one to Crawford. How about 190 innings in a ball though? That's a five month season. Yeah. yeah they weren't getting them in the sixth inning very often. <laughs> there was no such thing as a pitch count. Breaking ball one and two. Interception. Look at that. Unbelievable. That was coming up to us and she intercepted it. One ball and two strikes. Zito is on deck. We're in the fourth inning. Uh, and because of that, I think this is where you need to expand your zone as an eighth place hitter. Two and two. That was a good pitch right there from Stoltz. Not an easy take. Well, that's not the pitch you're going to expand it on. No, but I mean, a lot of guys will. I mean, they know the deal when they get that eighth slot. They got a pitcher on deck, and they got a runner in score position. Two two pitch. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout for Stoltz. Well, it's about time for another one of those magic at bats from Barry Zito. He always manages to put the ball in play. Zito fouled down the left field line. Zito rips one to second. And that will end the inning. Two stranded. Fifth inning coming up. Rip. Rip, baby. Now for our solar company electrifying play of the week it came on Friday night bottom of the ninth. Angel Pagan a walk off double knocks in Andres Torres and the Giants get to have some fun on the field and then go home and that's our 
Solar Company electrifying play of the week. That's the Solar Company. Pagan has a double and a pair of RBIs in this game. So Nick Hundley's going to lead things off. And Hundley takes a pitch inside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Hundley lines this one into center field. That'll be a base hit. Well, he's had the best swings today. Two hit day for Hundley. So here's Will Venable. Venable walked in the second. And he takes the pitch wide, one ball and no strikes. Well, Zito tried to stay inside the entire last at bat he faced Will Venable. Back in the second inning, and he, and he walked him, but never really made any attempt to go on the outside part of the plate on him. Now they're doing the exact opposite. Those two pitches both have gone away. Here's the one one and it's a call strike one and two. See you guy take that pitch a fastball outside corner. He's not looking fastball. Now with two strikes. You quit guessing. Ozzie keeps it out in front. It's two and two. That's a great example of, of what catchers try to do when that ball goes down the dirt. They just imagine that that chest protector is their glove. You're not trying to catch it with your glove. You're trying to catch it with your chest protector. And he smothers it right there. Once a runner sees that ball drop out in front, he freezes up. If it kicks to to a side, then it'll take off. And Venable had a good rip, had a pretty good pitch to hit. It remains two and two. And it's a lot easier to block when you got, got a guy out there throwing 83 miles an hour. When a guy's throwing 93 and above, you don't always have time to move your body in, in that fashion to get out in front of it. But still, that was textbook perfect from Buster Posey blocking it. And another foul back. So Venable's getting his swings in. This gentleman's keeping score. It's not the first time he's done that. Oh, he's got a ball. It's been a good day. Didn't smudge up his book. He's pumped. Arias. That's one. That's two. It's a foul ball. Jim Rill is the first base umpire making the call. I think it was correct. Get a good look here as we look down the line. Foul ball. Two balls, two strikes. Foul.
Marcotze retrieves. Marcotze lives in Reno. No doubt in my mind when Mark Kotze is done playing, he'll be a coach, maybe even a manager. It's that type of temperament. Double play ball. Crawford gets one. He gets a pair. All right, let us through this decision making process, Kurt. He's got speed with Vitable on the plate. Well, I think he did this because the ball was hit so hard. And he also knows the strength of his arm. And he can put stuff on the throw when he's thrown off of one foot. I mean, he was on a dead sprint long stride that when he hit the bag with his right foot and threw off it, and he threw a P rod to first base. I think it would have been an easier play to give it to Scudero. Scudero was playing a long ways away from the bag, but he was there in time. He hit the bag, you launch a seed, and you hurdle over the runner. Like a fun play. And, you know, that's a good point. It may have been that Crawford, out of the corner of his eye, saw that Scudero was going to get there, but maybe. Was going to get there only to get one out. Stoltz dumps this one in front of Pence for a two out single. Now, a reminder upcoming television game. The Giants are going to take on the Diamondbacks tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pre-game live at 6 30. And you'll see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Complete Giants coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSN Bay Area.com. Diamondbacks come in tomorrow for three. Wade Miley on the hill taking on Ryan Vogelsong. Day off. And then. Tinfish. Denarfia fouls this one. To Cabrera in the on deck circle. And it's no balls in one strike. Yeah starting on. This past Friday. The 12 games the Giants will be playing will be. Against Arizona and San Diego. He let out some shaft on that hat. He had a little bit of greed in that 0 1 swing. And the Dorothy's got some pop. One and two. The Dodgers, by the way, snapped their losing streak today. They beat Baltimore in an interleague game. Seven four is the final. They had lost six straight. Padres were the team that actually hurt them the most. The Padres swept them in a three-game series. Tanafia chases the high fastball, and for Zito, his second strikeout. Three nothing, guys.
book about the 2012 championship season. Forward written by Buster Posey, the afterward by Matt Kane. Great photos. And you can relive this great time in history. It's 40 bucks. You can order today, and shipping is free. Order today, and the shipping is free. One. 8885 Giants that's 18885 Giants and the book is exclusively sold by the San Francisco Giants dugout stores. Well, we want to say happy birthday to Samantha Marinick, 6 years old. Her father Greg works at the Giants front office and they're here today at the ballpark having a birthday party so Samantha happy birthday. Pagan rolls with foul probably got a souvenir foul ball. Just like this guy. Oh yeah. Thanks, Dad. That's my dad. No balls in one strike. Pagan skies this one into shallow left field. And Cabrera puts it away. Clearly not an easy play. It's Northern California. Come on. Pop-ups, they're entertainment. Right, if you keep it score of the foul balls today, Giants have had 29 foul balls. The Potters have had 18. And yes, we keep count. <laughs> Here's Scudero, none caught by Dr. Cohn. Scudero pops it up. Cabrera again, two outs. And here's Sandoval. That was pitch number 80 for Stoltz. Double fisted today. Oh, yeah. Well, some days they're just double fister days. Sandoval, an RBI single in the third. And it looked like Sandoval. The only way that he could possibly take a pitch is if he put the take sign on himself. On the ground sharply, knocked down. Cabrera off balance throw. Sandoval aboard. Gotta be a base hit. Waits well. With strong hands it to the backhand of Cabrera. Who cannot get a purchase on it. And really probably should not have made a throw. Oh. Life is good. French for life. Put the Giants colors on. Game ready. Posey's 0 for 2. He hits it high. He hits it deep. It is out of here. His first of the year, and it's 5 nothing. Welcome to the party, Mr. Posey. Saw that breaking ball early, and boy, did he wait. Hunter Pence fouls it back. Let's take a look at just how far it went into the bleachers. Good curveball. Almost halfway up. That had to feel good. He's been very quietly, very patiently putting together a swing. A lot of extra time. And he's getting close. And watch the foot get down early. And now here comes the bat head. He stays inside it, just releases through the ball. And that ball had no choice but to get out of his ballpark. Prince taps it foul. 
Two and two to Hunter Pence. And now full count. Hey, this guy happy. Huge posing thing. For a long time. Yeah. His whole life. On the ground to third. Headley. Picks it up. Throws. And digging it out is Guzman and that'll end the inning. So a two out hit for Sandoval and then Buster Posey. Bye, bye, baby, five nothing Giants. Giants lead five to nothing. We've got a new ABG's Giants exclusive ready for you at CSNBarry.com. This one with Madison Bumgarner. He talks about his great start to the season, three and zero, and he also talks about his acting performance in that Animal House commercial and how he nailed Stork. Find out how he prepped for that. CSNBarry.com, guys. <laughs> I still laugh about that commercial. See, Amy's still got some chocolate. I'm not talking about Amy anymore. She stole her. Milkshake. Cabrera bunts it and it's going to stay fair. Look at that. There's a little chunk right there. We saw Pablo General pick it up and throw it away. Well, that was the reason that ball stayed fair. A little spinach, it's rolling, and all of a sudden it hits the doorstop. Right there. Boop. Come on! It's a big league knock. <laughs> it's a great shot. It's not a great if you're Barry Zito, you're not too happy about it. Here's Headley. Headley takes low. Headley a single in the first, a ground ball to short in the third. I mean, that thing was going foul. Nope. Outside corner, one ball and one strike. See, this is not like golf, though. I mean, you could have gotten down there and you could have moved that chunk. Now, that ring right there is what they gave out during the ring ceremony to 40,000 people. That's a good one. One ball and one strike. Eighty-two pitches now for Barry Zito. Popped up. 
Hunter Pence. Headley retired. See who's here. Hey, Dad's here. You can always tell what Dad's here. You just can. Here's Guzman. He's hit two balls to left field, both very well. A couple of parks around the National League where he'd have two home runs today. And a strike. So Guzman quickly behind in the count. As he will check on Cabrera. Five steals on the year for Cabrera. Just outside. You saw the rings they gave away during the ceremony. Now, this is what the fans got. This is what the players got. I'd say they're about the same. Yep. You might be able to trade that person even up. Hit to left off the end of the bat. Who's one? No doubt he's trying to lift and separate today. Three times he's been sitting packing back to the Padre dugout. Three times he's saying the same thing. I just missed it. We talked about the comfortable 0 for 4. Well, he's got a comfortable 0 for 3 against Zito right now. I don't know if he's going to get a fourth try at him, but <laughs> that's what Zito does to you. He gets it off the sweet spot. Here's Jerko swings and misses. He had a bullet that Scudero caught in the fourth inning. I think it was one of the best at bats that the Padres have had against you all day. You know, Zito doesn't try to strike out unless the situation dictates it or you tick him off. Only two exceptions. The rest of the time he wants to get you out within three pitches. Just take the sting out of your bat. And let you hit it at somebody, not very hard. I call that pitching. Two and one to Jerko. Next pitch for Zito, number 90. Crawford's got it, and that'll end the inning. Padre Strand Cabrera, but Arias to lead things off.
Francisco Giants baseball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Five nothing Giants. This is the bottom of the sixth inning. Saw a pretty busy day out in McCovey Cove. It's a great day to be on the water or at the ballpark. There's the cove. Arias is 0 for 2 is he it's a high fly ball to the left. Back is Blacks he's at the wall and he makes the catch and crashes up against the wall. And now he's down. Well you can hear the thud there's a big fella he's about he's 6 6 about 255. He knocked the lenses out of his glasses. That took his breath away buddy black coming out and big time concern over his left fielder. I mean he really took on the wall they just replayed it on the big screen here and you could hear the moan from the crowd. Well, he thought it was going to be over his head watch the big fella take on the wall. You talk about putting a dent in the Toyota. Wow. That's how you separate a shoulder. Man, that jarred him. Well, that's how you cut your face too with the sunglasses falling apart. Uh, you always want to have the reputation as an outfielder that you will take on a wall, and he just proved it. Boy, he caught it coming down too. Wrigley Field? No, you don't take that wall. He on. might be done for life. If he does that same thing at Wrigley Field, he's on the DL. He's coming out. He is a big fella, folks. That's a lot of weight hitting that wall. That's a tight end. So Bud Black trying to signal into the Padre dugout as to who is going to come out and play. It's going to be Yonder Alonzo coming into first base and Jesus Guzman going out to left, I would imagine. And we can only hope that Kyle Blanks is all right. And he gets a nice round of applause from the great fans here. They appreciate a noble effort, and that was one of them. Yeah, Blanks hit a home run off of Kershaw on Wednesday. Look for this hit. It kind of curls around the foul pole. And that's the facing of the second deck at the very end. And that's one they talked about for a while and will continue to do so. I just doesn't happen very often. So here's Andres Torres. Hopefully all is good. As Torres hits a high fly ball in the center field. Two outs. So Mike is right. Guzman now goes to left. And Alonzo, Yonder Alonzo is at first. So here's Crawford. Crawford one for two. And at one hit he got was an 0 2 base hit the opposite way off Stokes. The curveball is down low. Is this an exercise? Well, uh, I think it's a class. We need to get in that class. <laughs> right. Little dribbler out in front of home plate. Hundley is going to make the play, and that'll end the inning. So, 
We would throw the rhythm off of that class so bad they wouldn't have a class. <laughs> oh. Deck? No way! Toyota game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. 5 0 Giants. Stoltz has been out there the entire game. He's given up the five earned runs. Zito, no earned runs. Posey's got a two run home run. And the Giants at ATT Park have won 15 of their last 19 regular season games. So if they got out of a country boy, that was a hit in between innings. Well, and our ladies were dancing to it. I think a nice round of applause. <laughs> I love this place. Look out. Suddenly goes down to a knee. And that's how Alonzo's at bat starts out. I beg your pardon, Alonzo. I said Hunley. I mean, that's right up there, chin high. And he was just sitting there on the bench about a half inning ago. Saw all day right there. And that curveball will start off at the left shoulder or the right shoulder of a left handed hitter. Now think about how this at bat started. All right. It's going dead. Give you a high five for that one. Here's the one two pitch. Hit a mile down the right field line and into the water. These two ladies here have no idea. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it, well, it, it, it almost hit him. It did. It could have winged him right in the back. That's the beauty of this ballpark. You never know. You never know. We shook man. Saw it. Saw a nice prize. That's what the code is all about. Got him. Another hook. See you later. Well, MLB at bat is the number one source for baseball everywhere you go. It's available on iPhone, iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Giants baseball with audio, pitch tracking, stats, breaking news, and video highlights. MLB Premium 
subscribers can get at bat premium feature for free and watch live out of market games. Go to you can text that bat to two uh, three one eight two six or go to sfgiants.com and check it out. Hundley's got a couple of hits. He's got a ball to the left of Crawford. Off balance throw. Got him. Well, he saves about every time he goes to his left and about how accurate he is when he throws off balance. And another testimony to that declaration. I mean, just not a problem. Look at the strike right to the chest of Iris. Get on the right foot. Boom, and there it goes. Amazing strength and just amazing accuracy on the run. Here's Venable. And a strike to Will Venable, or as his mother Molly calls him, William. Foul back, another and two to William. And that was pitch number 100 from Zito. There is activity down in the Giants' bullpen. Coach Campos. I beg your pardon, Chad Gaudin. One and two. Zito with four strikeouts. He will walk off the mound to a standing ovation as five nothing Giants. Ovation after seven incredible innings, and that really has run his streak in three consecutive starts. Now he has not given up a run to start off his season. All three of the starts we're talking about are here at AT&T Park. But boy, they are fond of this left-hander, and he is not disappointed today. And this is the reception we're talking about. Something as a player you just do not ever forget. That is music to your ears, and he has earned it. So it's going to be Nick Noonan who's going to hit. So Zito is done for the day. 
Well, seven solid innings. So it is haunted. Miller Park. It is, no question. At least for Zito. And he didn't pitch that poorly either. He just got bit. Yeah, he got bit and it all happened fast. His next start is going to be against these Padres next Saturday at Petco Park. So Noonan, lefty against lefty, takes a call strike. Noonan got a start. On Thursday in Milwaukee, and he went 0 for 4. What he's done is he's been a hit machine coming off the bench. Little pop up behind second base. Cabrera with a sliding catch and a nice play. Indeed. Lunin is now three for seven as a pinch hitter. Now let's watch the effort from Cabrera. He doesn't put the flip down glasses on. Nice slide into it. Look at the concentration watching that ball right into his glove. A little bit of a rattle there, kind of a snow cone. But a very difficult play. Made by Cabrera. Here's Pagan who's one for three. On the ground sharply to Headley. Headley on the back end and he throws him out. Warriors and Nuggets, NBA playoffs game two. That'll be Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Pre-game live will start at 7. And you're going to see it right here at Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Giants are on. Comcast Sports Net Plus. So here's Scooter looking for a hit. And Scooter takes a strike. Thad Weber, the right hander, getting loose down the Padres pen. You know, when this is all said and done, Mike, one of my highlights today is that little girl in center field. Uh, she got the whole day started out right. I agree with you. I think we should ask our guys to show that again. On the ground to Headley. And Scudero is thrown out to end the inning. A 1 2 3 inning for Stoltz. So we will now head to the eighth. Chad Jodan's going to come in. Giants on top five nothing.
started out our broadcast the kids were on the field waiting for the Giants defensively to take the field and this little girl got Angel Pagan's position center field he got the handshake she got an autograph they each got a hug and when it was all finished she took off like Forrest Gump and never stopped running <laughs> she, and we, we found out that she could run she stole the show this place got lit up nice ovation as she swung out past shortstop over towards the line when she went up the line towards home she ran by the Giants dugout and they were all out there on the rails collectively applauding her as were the people behind the, the Giants dugout it just was a great moment it was one of my favorites it's five nothing as Chad Godin throws the strike when it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and tune up the oil change tune up and smog experts game six for Godin he has been stellar five base runners and ten and a third with ten strikeouts against a walk Alexi Amarista is the hitter and it's now nothing in two and we see fastballs anywhere from 90 to 95 depending on the grip I and mean, he has been live coming out of the pin Got a, a, a slurve, kind of a cross between a, a hybrid between a curveball and a slider, and then a, a changeup, a circle change. And three pitches. Amarista is out. That's a pun. Thanks for stopping by. Well, check out the dynamic deals for all three Diamondback games. They're coming into town tomorrow through Wednesday. And Monday tickets start as low as 12 bucks, and there are still $8 tickets available for Wednesday. So go to sfgiants.com slash dynamic deal and get yourself some seats and get out of here. We are having a ball. Here's Denorfia. Denorfia goes the other way, and it's at Pence who drifts back. All right, let's check in again with Amy G. Amy. All right, gentlemen. Well, today marks the first time that Buster Posey has started at catcher on a day game following a night game. Now, of course, we're talking about a small sample size since the season's still in its first month. But Buster is on pace to play more games behind the dish this season than last season. According to Chris Half, MLB.com, he covers the Giants. He stated that Buster started 111 games that last season. Of course, they were pacing him coming off of that leg injury. This season, he's on pace to start 126 games. That's a huge jump, and I think it's something that the Giants would definitely like to see. Gentlemen? That is true. Here's Everett Cabrera. One thing about Godin, he's been so impressive with the consistency of stuff and his command, and he has been on top of hitters like 0-1 so consistently. This is pop back and out of play. Interesting bunt that we haven't seen happen. Maybe ever it was going to roll foul, then it hit that. You know the other thing about Buster Posey, you also have to count the 16 postseason games of which he played first base in one of those. So add 15 more games to that total. Remember Blanco's bunt in the World Series. Another sign. A lot of breaks in that series look to the Giants. And to their credit, they took advantage of it. That was fun. A lot of Buster Posey jerseys. But if you look around the ballpark, you see a uh, a great combination of a lot of the different Giants and their names on the back. Out of play. I see a Willie Mays jersey down below. Angel Pagan. 
two popular ones. Big Sal. Big Sal. He's big. Up the middle. And the base hit. How many of those do you think they sold at the dugout store? One? <laughs> big Sav? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going with one. Yeah, one. Maybe got a deal on it, too. Number 69. Number 69, your program, number one in your heart. Big Sav. Well, right now, we're all Boston fans. Here's Headley. Headley one for three as he takes a pitch down low. The 1 0 pitch. Swinging a high foul down the left field line, headed to the club level, and then down below, and it hit. It hit a fan in the worst spot. The hands, right in the hands. Oh man! Sorry. All right, one more check. Did he spill a drop? With his glove. Oh. Well, you get booed. Got to handle your seat a little bit better now. Good natured. I think it found a good home. The Love fan, in. nice play by Posey. The fan that did not make the play. I don't think he was going to go to bed with the ball, but that kid is. So I'm thinking because of that, that's a good home. Three balls and one strike. Get on the ground. Fair. To Arias. Side retired. Five Dumpton Giants. Home of the most live sports. Here at AT&T Park. On a very nice Sunday afternoon. The Giants five. The Padres nothing. When it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. It's Thad Weber who's on the hill. Chance to look at him for the first time. See his numbers. Had a no decision. 
and April 13th. Four pitch guy, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. Guy you like to have on your staff because he can definitely give you a spot start if you need it. And that's a good curveball. Whatever, 6'2, 205 pounder, rookie, 28 years old. Sandoval hits one high into left field for Guzman. And Guzman had a tough time with that one, but he puts it away, one out. Well, suppose he hit his first home run of the year in the fifth inning. He got this one. Yeah, he waited well. The and he has been very quietly put together a swing. And he's been saying every day, I'm close, I'm coming out of it. You can see him. The discipline that he has been using in sprint in uh, batting practice. And he's finally starting to see some results. Stay tuned immediately after Giants baseball for Esherance Giants post game live highlights, reaction, and analysis. It's all coming up right after the ball game. Two and one, not a Buster Posey. I bought my Grammy to the yard for her 82nd birthday. Well, happy birthday, Grammy. Three and one. Curveball, 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 curveball. He's got a good one. Straight down biter. Full count not a Buster Posey. Taps this one to short. And Everest Cabrera will throw out Buster Posey. Two outs. And here's Hunter Pence. Guys will see two left handers coming up. So you may see this lineup again tomorrow night. When the Giants take on the Diamondbacks. Wade Miley. On Monday and Patrick Corbin on Tuesday. And then. The ace of the staff for Arizona. Ian Kennedy on Wednesday. Did they get to the bottom of that cotton candy bag. That's about the part of the bag you, you get to. You start to think about sharing with your brother. Well, not only that, you're not not your hands aren't just sticky. Your whole arm is sticky. <laughs> That's not a problem. Those two conquered the fear of sticky a long time ago. Three and one to Pence. Like if you ain't sticky, you ain't having fun. That's their motto. What's the biggest fight you can eat here? Pence will take the walk. That's the first walk issued by Padre pitching today. Stoltz didn't walk anybody through seven. Arias looking for his first hit. He hit the ball that blanks. Crashed into the wall in left field after catching Arias's drive that came in the sixth with Arias leading off, and there's a soft line drive to Alonzo, and that'll end the inning. So we'll go to the ninth. These guys are getting after their cotton candy here. You want some? No, I'm good. I'll get my own. <laughs>
After Jazz post game live right here on Comcast Sports in the Bay Area. Joined down to Mindy Bach and John Henry Smith as they give you, well, analysis and uh, reaction to this one. And we're going to talk about David Lee, who's done. That's right, done. What is the Warriors' next move? And Sharks playoff push preview versus Columbus. All that and more. Sports Net Central right after the game. Go Dan throws a strike to Jesus Guzman. Five nothing Giants. This is the top of the ninth. Guzman has hit three fly balls to left field, a couple of them pretty deep. Arias is now at third. Bell comes into the game. He's at first. Sandoval out of the game. Guzman goes around one and two. Javier Lopez getting up. You might see him in this game to get him some work. Arias to Belt. One out. Stay tuned for the postgame wrap in just a bit. And Mike will also talk about the game with Murph and Mac tomorrow morning on KMBR 680. Here's Jerko. I think you're right. I think. Lopez is going to face Alonzo. And a strike to Jerko and it's 0 1. It's all about maintaining your bullpen, keeping them sharp. You can't let a guy go stale, especially in April. April is the month where everybody feels their best, their arm feels the strongest. Good pitch. Good breaking ball one and two. Got him. I mean, you talk about painting a guy with breaking balls. Wow. That second, third strike, he goes front door for strike number two, and he paints him on the outside corner. And this is just shaving the black. Bob Davidson says it's pretty good from here. So here's Alonzo. That's right. Grab some pine meat. Well said. I wish I'd said that. Yeah. Alonzo came in when Blanks left. He had one at bat in the seventh and he struck out. That was against Zito, and now it's over two. And Rodan is cruising. And here's his reward. He's got him up on their feet with one strike to go. There's not a pitcher alive that's not pitching for a strikeout in this situation. Get out to left, and that's the ball game. So the Padres come in town after the Giants had had a miserable series in Milwaukee. San Diego comes in on Friday and the Giants sweep the Padres and uh, overall very nice ball game and Barry Zito back on the horse. Uh, he was fantastic but you think about it, the last 21 innings the Giants have pitched they have shut out these Padres 21 consecutive zeros but Zito right back on the horse after the rough outing Milwaukee and right now he is the best there is in this ballpark. Final score the Giants five the Padres nothing.
He shares Giants post game live with interviews of the rap is coming up. But first, let's go to the Sports Center studio 